Warning. This episode of the World Nomads podcast has explicit content, not suitable for sensitive ears. The War Nomads podcast bonus episode. Here amazing nomads sharing their knowledge, stories and experience of world travel. Yes, another episode featuring an amazing nomad. And this time it's something a little bit different. We are meeting Matthew Harding. He's an American internet sensation known as Dancing Matt. He's a sensation because his videos have gone viral showing him dancing. Uh, they say the basic elements of a successful online video, those that go viral, include the fundamental principles of human interaction, emotion and surprise, as an example. For Matt, his videos are also about connection, feeling more connected to other people, to the world and to communities. Yeah, he's now a father of two young children, but let's check in and look back at how Matt's dancing videos ultimately secured a sponsor who paid him to travel the world. Thanks for being on the podcast, Matt. Thank you. Tell us, come on, how did you get into this? How did I, I, I really backed into it, I'd say. Uh, I was neither an expert at dancing or traveling, but uh, I, I enjoyed doing both. 2003, uh, I was actually, I was living in Brisbane at the time, Australia, and I left my job there and had really gotten the bug for travel from my coworkers in Brisbane. And it's more of a, it's, you know, the gap year and all that, which is not something that I'd grown up with in the States. I, I learned about just kind of going somewhere without really having a plan and working your way through not, not having everything, you know, booked and lined up in advance, but just, just kind of wandering. And that really excited me. And so I started doing that a bit. And, uh, when I left my job, I, I kind of carved out six months and said, if I don't do this now, I'm never going to do it. And I started traveling and then, Uh, One of the guys who I worked with uh, in Vietnam, he said, uh, why don't you go stand over there on the curb and do that stupid dance you do at work, which which was just a thing that I would do when it was time to go to lunch. Uh, (laughs) Usually I was the first one eager to get up and go to lunch, and I would kind of hover over people's desks and do this jig until they couldn't work anymore, and then they'd get up and come with me. And uh, so I just did that dance and decided, oh, this is a pretty nice way of taking a sort of a memento of each place that I have gone to on this trip. And uh, this was in the early, early days before YouTube, before digital cameras were really prevalent. Mobile phones didn't have cameras yet. So it was right at the beginning of it being possible to do something like that. And I just got to be the person who did it first and it became known. And it, and when the video got seen, I found it on YouTube years later and people had this really strong reaction to it. There was something in it that I didn't know I was putting into it that, that triggered this feeling of wanderlust and, um, and freedom. And so I got to keep going and making more of them. Just explain. So your mate got you to do the dance on the corner, filmed it, put it up on YouTube, and then a someone that became your sponsor sent you around the world to do this dance? Right. So uh, I made that first video and and then found it on YouTube. And when I found it, it had 600 some thousand views. And I wanted to crawl under my bed and hide uh, <laughs> because I thought this was, you know, I was really embarrassing. Everybody's watching me dance like an idiot. And, and then as it turned out, that wasn't the response at all. And People were passing it around, and then, yeah, the sponsors came along, and it was right at the beginning of the term viral video had just become a thing that people were talking about, and everybody wanted one, but nobody knew how to make one yet. So they said, hey, uh, this uh, Cadbury uh, at the time said, hey, we're making this new chewing gum called Stride Gum. We want a viral video for it. Would you travel around the world and make one? And I said, "Are wait, are you – going to pay for it? And they said, yes. And I said, then sure. Uh, and so I spent a good chunk of the next year, uh, wandering all over the planet, just going everywhere that was on my list of places I always wanted to go and never thought I'd get to. Uh, and all I had to do when I got there was dance for 10 seconds and then I could go on to the next place. (laughs) (laughs) Not like Fred Astaire either. (laughs) It's like, it's a kind of weird running man snap thing, isn't it? We'll put a copy of the video on, on the show notes, but just for people listening right now, can you describe your little, your lunchtime jig? Oh, geez. Okay. Well, it, it's just, you know, okay. You know how you ask a two-year-old if they can dance and they say, yeah, of course, because every two-year-old knows how to dance. And then you see what they do. That's pr- I pretty much never stopped doing that. 
just kind of jump up and down and swing my arms and swing my legs. And uh, for some reason, I snap my fingers. It's it's really arrhythmic. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense. It's just what I do. And I think everybody sort of got a thing that their body naturally does if they if they just don't worry about it and let it happen. Uh, and so I just did that. And, um, and the essence of it is it's so freaking annoying. It makes your workmates want to go to lunch with you. (laughs) It's very difficult to finish what you're working on when I'm doing that dance. So these um, workmates, you know, let's go back to Brizzy in, in Australia, Brisbane in Australia. Did they, you know, get wind that you were working for Stride Gum or Stride Gum would pick you up uh, on the basis of this annoying dance and you were, you know, subsequently going to 39 countries in seven continents? What was the reaction? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can say it. And, and my, <laughs> it's, I'm tempted to, to try an accent and I should not do that. Oh, no, um, please do. Yeah, please. Go on. <laughs> Oh, for fuck's sake. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly what we said. (laughs) So where did you go? You went to 39 countries. Which ones did you put on your list? Okay, that one, uh, that was the 2006 one. So, boy, Uh, Galapagos Islands. Uh, We went to uh, Easter Island, Antarctica. Um, It's hard to separate them because now there were like three big videos at this point. Uh, what's, oh, we went to the Federated States of Micronesia, okay. which is a country larger than the United States that takes up a large chunk of the Pacific Ocean. It's a bunch of tiny little islands. Um, that was amazing. Got to do some great scuba diving there. Uh, let's see, Myanmar, um, Mongolia, um, Laos. Uh, I, it's it's a laundry list of uh, Egypt, Turkey. South Africa, Namibia was amazing, and I didn't get a good clip I could use in Namibia. It was always hard because each I had about three days in each country, and I had to get something. I had to get six seconds somewhere really, really interesting and, and distinct, and and I was going so fast, and I was actually all by myself for a good chunk of it. I didn't always manage to get a usable clip in each country. Yeah, hang on, but they kept sending you on to the next yeah. one. How do you get that gig? <laughs> the, the sponsor, they hadn't, they didn't know where I was and they didn't particularly care. I tried saying, okay, I'm going to be here and then here. And they were just like, look, we don't care. Just, just go do it. Just have it done on this day. How did they so, use the videos, Stride Gum? How did they use them? Uh, they didn't really, they, they had me upload it to my YouTube page. Uh, and I put the Stride logo at the end of it. I said, this video was made possible by stride but that was it so you don't you know you don't generally watch the credits of youtube videos this was something that people were just figuring out um so most people probably 99 percent of people watch the video and say oh that was interesting i have no idea you know was he is he rich did his stock ipo uh and it, it was down below on the youtube comments where people would always explain oh no no stride paid for it stride paid for it so it was kind of like it was it was stealthily uh inserted that that it was sponsored and it, and it wasn't kind of plastered all over it which was nice i think that uh that actually helped now when you were there in the galapagos you said you went diving or you said you were somewhere and went diving was this again all covered by this sponsor well they just gave me a budget they just said here uh and and i went to the places that i wanted to go and and spent what i had to spend to do it um so yeah and you know when you're going fast and it's just you and I, I brought my girlfriend at the time uh and so you know it wasn't it didn't cost a whole lot that's a great story you also did rwanda and petra and then there are you would put a call out explain that on social media for people to come and do it with you that's right that was step two so the <laughs> the first video uh i put out it was just me dancing by myself and as i was doing it day after day uh, you know, today I'm in Egypt dancing, next day I'm in Singapore, next day I'm in uh, Vietnam or wherever. It got a little bit boring. The traveling was great, but the dancing clips, I, I realized this is not that interesting, but <laughs> it was in Rwanda that I danced with a bunch of kids because there wasn't really, a, you know, there's no Taj Mahal in Rwanda. There's no Great Wall of Rwanda. Uh, the, there's just a lot of people. And so... I danced with some kids and that ended up being my favorite clip in the video. 
and the best time that I had on that trip. So I came home thinking that's what I should have done. I had this kind of idea that I was going to go to the, the, all the postcard images around the world, but what's a whole lot more interesting is seeing people in those places. And so I said to stride, thank you for sending me all over the world for a year. I had a wonderful time, but I did it wrong. And you need to send me around again. <laughs> and I'm going to get people to dance with me. And they said, sure. So that led to the 2008 video where I, and after I put the video up, every single response was the same thing. It was, you forgot to dance where I live. Uh, you didn't dance in South Korea. You didn't dance in Sweden. You didn't dance in Brazil. So I just kept all those emails and I wrote back to them and I said, okay, I'm coming to Brazil. Here's where I'll be. Come out and dance. And so everywhere I went, there'd be thousands of people coming out to dance. And that was a, a lot more fun. Did they laugh at your dance? What did they laugh at my dance? They couldn't, they couldn't see my dance. It was just a big, everybody was doing their own dance. Uh, and I was just kind of in the crowd. So <laughs> it was, it was a lot easier, you know, cause I actually would get self-conscious. I mean, I'm not, I'm not someone who can go out and do something embarrassing in front of a lot of people and not, you know, feel nervous about it. And so now I had these big crowds and it didn't feel as difficult. It was, we were all acting like fools. So it was fun and easy. Uh, and so I finally figured out what I should be doing, what I should have been doing all along once I started making the video that way. Do you recall how many views the YouTube videos have had, all of them in total? Uh, I, over a hundred million. <gasps> and you don't like making an interview of yourself in front of people. Wow. Matt. <laughs> What a story. So, so this woman, this girlfriend you took with you at, was at the time. You've obviously got a new one now. She missed out no, big no, time. No, I, I worded that poorly. She's upstairs giving the kid a bath. Ah, <laughs> awesome. So she was your girlfriend at the, at time, the time and became yeah, your and wife. She still is now. We never got married. So I guess technically she's still my girlfriend. Uh, it's just we have a house and, you know family so is that boring in comparison to the to the life that you were leading you know having- well, come on you're a mother you know how we tra- yeah, it's it's of course it must be very depressing Matt. <laughs> uh I, I don't know how to answer that without sounding cliche no it's yeah. not well uh, we did in our little preamble warm up when we were ch- chatting to you i did say there's such a handbrake aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no you know i kind of feel like I, what i'm really really grateful for again i'm going to try really hard not to sound corny but yeah if i hadn't gotten to go and do all that, then it would nag me all the time when I was stuck at home doing mundane things that you have to do when you're a parent, I would be thinking, I never got to do all these things, but I got to do enough that I got to the point where it's like, all right, I'm, I'm done doing this. I've wandered the planet for years. I'm ready to stop. So it's, it's great. No regrets. Uh, And I'm, I'm super grateful for that. That's one of the questions that we ask a lot of the, the couples that are travelling and don't have children and or nor do they have a house. You know, at some time, will you feel like settling down? And all every answer is always yes, of course we will. What would your message be to those those people? That settle down? Yeah, I, I would say that, that they're doing it right. I mean, that's it, it really worked for me. I, I do all the things that you'll regret not doing later because there's you know there's a lot that you you can't there's a lot you're going to miss out on in life if you're wandering the whole time you got to sort of stay put and and build a foundation and uh and i think that they're doing it in the right order if they if they kind of you know go through their list and and do everything and say all right all right did that now what's next and then then there'll be time for it again you know and i'm getting to the point now where they're able to travel now. Finally, it's, it's, it's really easy. I've gone to Iceland with them. I've gone to, uh, we went to London last year. We're planning a trip to Singapore and they're great travelers. So you just got to go through a couple difficult years of just changing diapers all the time. And then you can get back to it. Are they old enough to have seen the videos? Have they seen dad's funny dance? The videos are what they became is, uh, toenail clipping videos. So you, when you have little kids, you got to clip their fingers and their toes all the time. <laughs> Very difficult to get them say, to sit still. And for some reason that those videos, I recommend this to any parent has a magical power to get kids to sit still while you clip their nails. So that's <laughs> how they know. It. it just sounds like a bizarre story, but it's all so very true. Yeah. You could think about doing a family dance. That's right. It has occurred to me. I have one. So, you, you know, the, 
the thought occurred to me when before they were born, and then you have them, and they, they are who they are, and you don't you don't get to say, "Come on, you know, you're, we're doing this." One of them uh, is pretty shy, and then the other one I think would be up for it. So I haven't figured out how to navigate that yet. <laughs> Just don't tell them about the hundred million views. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. That's the other thing of like, man, that no kid's ready for that. I was no. really glad that that whole experience of kind of the, the blowing up on YouTube and then it's hot for a day and then it's over like that whole emotional roller coaster happened when I was in my thirties and I was prepared to deal with it. But I've, I, I've met a bunch of these other YouTube stars over the years. Cause there is like a secret underground network uh, of us. And, and a lot of them had much harder times of it than I did. You know, it was something, it was a little more controlled and planned in my case. Sometimes it's just like, you know, you film your kid in the backseat of your car and he's just been to the dentist and he's drugged and and the weird thing happens. And then you're known for that forever. And it's, it can be, it can be painful and destructive. Uh, but I, so I wouldn't want to sign my kids on for that. I've Uh, actually got a little home video of my daughter when she was about five doing a, she was film. She was, you know, using the photo booth. She was yep. using photo yeah. booth, and yeah. she was singing "The Lion Sleeps Tonight" ah, woo, and over and over and over, uh, and then just absolutely, you know, wetting herself, laughing at herself as well. And my son, who's slightly older, and he's going, "Oh, we should put that. That'll go viral." And go, "Yes, it will." That's why we're not putting it on. That's a big call. I get that. Mind you, yeah. if, she, if I do release the video, if it gets me to travel the world with her singing "The Lion Sleeps Tonight," yeah, who? Everywhere around the world, I'll do it. Exactly. (laughs) Fantastic to talk to you. I love the story. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, we don't have to show it, but can we at least just take a little listen to your daughter from that video? Yeah, okay, here you go. And I'm going to sing a song for you. The lion sleeps tonight. The lion sleeps tonight. The lion sleeps tonight. Very cute. Very, very cute. It goes on for six and a half minutes exactly like that. So it was allowed to go on for six and a half minutes. No, we were trying to shut it down, I promise you. (laughs) Well, by the way, when asked about other dancers that have gone viral, Matt says all Fortnite dancers are banned from the house. Flossing and dabbing are forbidden. The kids can do it at school, but they can't bring it home. But I didn't ask about the latest craze, the triangle dance. Uh, so the triangle dance, three people stand in a triangle with their hands on each other's shoulders and then you jump forward, sidestep left, sidestep right, jump forward again in unison. So there's always somebody jumping forward, yep. okay? Yeah. Uh, we had a go at it here at World Nomads headquarters in Sydney, as, our, mm. as did our office in Cork. <laughs> I think they've got an advantage that... You know, a bit of Irish dancing yes, may have helped there. Exactly, okay. exactly. Uh, we'll put that and Matt's efforts uh, in the show notes, so have a look. Now, if you're an amazing or if you know, actually nominate yourself. We've had yeah. someone nominate themselves as an amazing nomad. Yep, don't yep. hold back. It's okay. Exactly. Uh, or if you know an amazing nomad who demonstrates discovery, transformation, love, fear, or like Matt Connection, email podcast at worldnomads.com. Uh, you can get the World Nomads podcast on iTunes or do- download the Google podcast app. Look, can you please subscribe for us and do some rating as well? And most importantly, word of mouth. Please share and tell your friends about us. Next week, we take you to Bhutan. Amazing nomads. Be inspired.